So in my mind, I had a memory of what it was like to be a firm Christian. If you worked out so much, and then all of a sudden you backslide into your old life, when you go back, you're going to have a memory of how much you could lift, how much you could push, and the workouts that you could do. But you physically won't be able to yet bring that, bring that up. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my channel. I know that I don't really post, I haven't posted in a while. Um, we're gonna pray for that. We don't need to overthink every little thing. As you can see from the, the, the title of this video, um, backsliding is not a plan. And I'm going to explain why um, from a point of my testimony. So just a short, quick, um, explanation of how I got saved so yes um, I was born into a Christian family but the Christian family that was a denominational church um, so I always believed in God um, and was always really scared or fearful um, not in like necessarily the bad way there was still love for God um, I already was exposed to sin as young as the age of six um, so the biggest thing that I struggled with was lust um, by the, my grade 8, I think it was grade se end of grade 7 or grade 8, um, I got saved for the very first time and the day after, we know the routine, putting up my hand every Friday. Um, I wasn't a person who necessarily always cried and I was dealing with, um, I, I love my family, and um, but I was dealing with things from the divorce and then I was also just like emotionally bullied at school and um, primary school so there was a lot of rejection and those types of feelings um, but the very first time I cried um, without because usually I would only cry like once maybe in a year or for a very long time and my older sister would ask me how I am and what's going on at school so for the first time I cried during a worship song I would feel that presence of the Lord and it would always be these broken cries. I've cried broken cries until the age of 19, um, always only in the presence of the Lord. But there after I got saved, I'm very passionate about Jesus, loved Jesus, wanted to tell everyone about Jesus, literally put him in every single conversation. Um, so I was irritating. I had a relationship with the Lord. I'm not saying I saw miracles or anything like that, but I had a relationship with the Lord and desired to do many things. God had given me scriptures to stand on, um, and I put it here. Kept condemning myself and going back into religion because I, I couldn't find figure out why I can't live my life properly for God, and it's because I had this memory. I always looked back and be like, I was this, I was joyful, I was happy. I, I could stand up for God. I could just speak His word. I could speak the truth right in front, no matter what. And I wondered why where did this go you know and i loved jesus and in those times i didn't thought you know i didn't but i love jesus and i loved jesus and i thought like but where did this go so in my mind i had a memory of what it was like to be a firm christian um but because if you gain so much it's like working out if you worked out so much and then all of a sudden you backslide into your old life when you go back you're gonna have a memory of how much you could lift how much you could push the work part and the workouts that you could do but you physically won't be able to yet bring that bring that up yes the rebound the re not the rebuttal sorry the bounce back can be faster but you still have to start back at the small the little part again and if you're gonna pick up heavy if you're gonna pick up heavy then you're gonna hurt yourself you know you're gonna want to give up you're gonna do all of that stuff and that was my issue and also just you know people pleasing tolerating my son and tolerating other son and just not having full fear of the lord because those are two different things. Go watch Jump Up Here on the Fear of the Lord. There's two scriptures that I want to read. And the one is Matthew 6 verse 
22. The eye is the lamp of your body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Like, what are you surrounding yourself with? What are you taking in? You know, don't think that, oh, it's just a small little seed or whatever. No, it is important. Now, you know, don't have to be like on edge or everything and now be so critical because I became cynical. But be just like discerning, you know. Everything is not beneficial for you to grow um, in, your, in your life. God knows your heart don't rush the process if you are struggling with lust if you are struggling with lying or gossiping or whatever allow god to heal you give it over to god don't force yourself to be healed or because transformation um transformation and character and all of that is not a work of the flesh it is a, a a gift of god it is by god's grace that we are able to reach a certain certain character um so don't push it down and say oh no it mustn't be it mustn't be yes we are turning from it but god needs to deal with it in our hearts some people get saved and they are immediately delivered from it and they don't care for it others it's kind of like a journey okay because it's still a part of this to see whether our faith is true okay now god doesn't this but he allows this this was a uh, an issue like one of my issues 2 peter 1 verse 5 to 8 i think yeah for this reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to your goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from past sins. And that was me. I even got to a point where I started struggling with something that used to be so easy for me, which was forgiving. You know, because why? I got, I got knowledge, but I did not have self-control in practicing it or persevering anymore and then how could that have led to godliness or character you know of like god's glory um then leading into loving one another and complete love agape love you know unconditional love toward everyone else if you do not do this in increasing measure meaning it's the cycle is gonna keep going because i'm not the same as or isn't the requirement was not the same for when i first got saved when i first got saved um literally you you were maybe not expected to do much right god was pleased anyways so me just forgiving at that time or coming to church um reading my word was enough that was enough whatever i was exposed to but then as you get older again you go through a new phase new phase new phase but if you're gonna go back then that is what keeps you from being ineffective in god's kingdom and um forgetting literally that you have been cleansed and there's two ways to forget it either it's prideful in a sense of yeah like i don't have that much sin whatever i can do this da, da, da. And I experienced that even because I had a lot of religion in me and um, dealt with perfectionism. And then I also had the victimization one where you're like, oh my word, like God doesn't love me. He hasn't, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this wrong, you know, whatever. I might as well just, I might as well just do this stuff. No, as soon as you also got, got forgiveness and you truly meant it, he forgives you and he blots out your sins. Um, so we struggled with like you know obedience to god which is something that i think it's not myself as well um because i mean there's different things okay but own own your sin acknowledge it acknowledge that you need help acknowledge god just give it over don't care what anyone else has to say about you it's your relationship with god but don't use your freedom to indulge in the sinful things um, but keep going, you know, 
um, I know it, you might have that big urge to turn to turn around and to just do the old things, but the rather look forward, it's it's gonna be much more worth it to go forward than to go back. And if you accidentally fell, you know, just get back up again. Don't sit there. Um, God loves you, and ask Him to give you wisdom on His presence. Seek Him, and so that you may have the fear to install um, inside of you. Um, and if you have backslidden, come back to Jesus today. Um, rededicate your life to Him and live for Him. I think let's pray as well. Okay, Father God, I just thank you for whoever's watching on the other side of the screen, Father. If they are someone that's backsliding and wanted to give give their life back um, to you and give their lives again, I just thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you have made on the cross for their lives, Lord. And as they receive you today, they have become a child of God today. And I pray that they walk in that identity, not based on what they can see, Lord, but knowing that your word says that. And I just pray for every person also watching that you may give them the strength, Father, and an increase in their spiritual wisdom and understanding, Lord, to walk this this journey with you, Father God. It is not by works, but it is your grace, Father. But let us give over to you, Lord, and just completely rest in your presence and in your the work of your hands, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. And we thank you that you have sought out a relationship with us, Lord. And that even if we fall, Father God, that we can get up and be in your hands. We will not be overwhelmed because your hand supports us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye. Jesus loves you, loves you, and I love you. Bye.